Hi, everyone. We're here at ZenkaiCon 2023 with John Swayze, known for Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, My Hero Academia, Food Wars, and much more. How was your con? Absolutely wonderful. I had a great, great time. Uh, I've never been to Lancaster, Pennsylvania before. I was a little nervous because, as we all know, the Houston Astros beat the Philadelphia Phillies in the World Series, so I didn't know if there was going to be any bad blood, but turns out there's not. And uh, Lancaster is a delightful little town. Zenkai Con's been an absolutely great, stellar convention. I've had a blast. Are you from Houston? I am from Houston originally. I live there now, and it's my family is and all that, so yeah. So before you started working in anime, were you a fan of the genre? No, I, uh, well, <laughs> no. No, that sounded uh, strong. Uh, yeah, hell no. <laughs> no, I, uh, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. Um, I started my career as an actor in 1987 after I graduated from college and was doing film and television and stuff like that and then really started to get into voiceovers, doing commercials and uh, for TV and radio and industrial narration and stuff like that. And I... Uh, met somebody in 1997 that said, uh, hey, you ought to try anime. And I was like, well, what's anime? And they're like, well, it's Japanese animation. I was like, well, I don't speak Japanese, so what do I, how do I do it? And they're like, well, that's good, because we actually dub it into English. And I was like, oh, okay. And there happened to be a company called ADV Films in Houston, and I auditioned for them and got cast. Um, and my first show was a show called Golden Boy. And... Uh, I still, for like a year or two, still didn't really know what, what anime was because it was so niche at the time. Um, and I was, yeah, I was super busy. To me, it was just another acting gig. And uh, I was just kind of like, well, I don't know. Why does everyone have blue pointy hair? I don't, you know. And uh, so it, it took a while before I started to really catch on. And then um, I started watching some of the stuff, not because I wanted to see me, but I was actually really more for my kids because I did some shows that were really geared for kids. And I started watching going, well, this is actually kind of cool. And my kids really liked it. They were having a good time. And um, then I started working for Funimation as well as, an act, as, well as uh, ADV. And it has evolved into uh, this is all I do because now I direct at Sentai became – uh, excuse me, ADV became Sentai Filmworks, and I direct there full-time and act full-time for them and Funimation, and I was like, this is all I do. I don't do any more movies or TV or anything like that. It's, I'm 100%. So I've gone through this radical evolution of not even knowing what the genre is to this is how I make my living. Now, has the process of dubbing Japanese animation changed since you started? Oh, absolutely. Um for one thing, uh, a lot of the actors, I mean, Monica Rial and Lucy Christian and Chris Sabat and, uh, you know, all these OG people like me are, you know, we've been doing it for 27 years. And so uh, it's become, I don't want to say, you know, old hat or it's, we don't phone anything in, but we've just, we've just all gotten very good at what we do and, and um, you know, the, through the process. But a lot of the technology has changed uh, during the pandemic. That actually changed a lot because it forced us, and I say us, the studios, uh, and the actors for that matter, but it forced us to really embrace remote recording. So five years ago, uh, if I were at Zenkai Khan and somebody said, I have a question, what's your question? How do I get into voiceover? And I'm like, well, uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is leave uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, because it's not happening here. You got to either go to New York or LA or Dallas or Houston or maybe Vancouver, uh, BC. And, um, because that's where the work is. Now you can live in Lancaster and record if you're, you know, if you get hired and that's the good news. The, the, the bad news is, is that not only can you do that, so can everyone else in the world. <laughs> so the talent pool has exploded, uh, with competition, but, um, it's, it's really changed things. It's a game changer. And as a director, for me, it does open things up. I can use people in England if I want to. If I have somebody that needs to have a British accent, I can find an actor in England, you know, that's legit and real and authentic. So it it's gives cool. you a bigger pool yes, of voices absolutely. to pick from. Absolutely. <laughs> and and also the, you know, things like Pro Tools and the just the, the software and the hardware, the, the you know, that's changed. I mean, we just... At Sentai, just redid our studios with brand new equipment and stuff like that. Funimation 
redid theirs during the pandemic, built a brand new facility, and it's gorgeous. And so, yeah, a lot has changed. And really, a lot of it has changed because of the fans. And I mean that by, you know, when I started doing this, there might be one or two conventions a month. Now there's six and seven or more a weekend and all over the world. And you go to these shows, the fans are just rabid and not rabid. That's not the right word. They're just, there's a, a lot of them and they love their anime. And um, so it's because of that, it's poured more money into the industry, which has enabled us to really grow and not just, you know, shoestring it together. Have you had to record remotely while traveling at conventions? Um, yes, uh, not for anime. I did have to record. Uh, my wife and I went to uh, Dublin, Ireland for a convention, and I had to do some rec- – I was on the plane. I got a mess. I had to do some recording. So I found – I had to find a studio in Dublin and go record. It wasn't anime, but I still had to, to do it. But I – you know, generally, the conventions are on the weekend, so I don't – I try to not – leave on a Wednesday to go to a convention, I, you know, because so it usually doesn't interfere. So what would you say is your easiest voice to do and your most difficult voice? Um, well, the voice itself is not easy or difficult uh, because it's your voice and you can manipulate it however you want. What's easy and difficult is like, for instance, in the game Borderlands 2, I play a character named Salvador. And Salvador talks like this. Well, that's very just, you can hear. Yeah. Uh, you do a couple hours of that, man, and you're just like, oh, I think I'm done. Uh, as opposed to doing like even all for one. Uh, it's not my normal voice, but it's down here like this. And it's much easier for me to do and do it in longevity because it's not really straining my cords. So really the easiest is the the easiest voice is the one that doesn't put a lot of strain on your vocal cords. The hardest one is the one that really strains it. Another character uh, I did from a show called My Bride is a Mermaid. And I played Gosaburo and everything he says, he yells. So we would we would literally record for 10 15 minutes and then take a 30 minute break. You know. So w- when it's rough, what's your go-to voice cure? Uh, Jameson's Irish whiskey. Have a cup today. No, um, I, maybe th- uh, <laughs> when my voice sounds like that, uh, throat coat, hot tea is good. Um, but really, the truthful thing is, and any actor, will, voice actor, will tell you this: there's only one true remedy for uh, soothing your voice, and that's to just quit talking. I mean, that's just, you know, you can't, because even if you do like chloroseptic or anything like that, all it's doing is masking, you know, and you could probably end up doing more damage because you're, it's like, you know, playing on a broken foot and they just tape it up real good. And then you just end up doing more damage because you can't feel it, you know, but you actually are hurting it more. So are there any projects coming up that you can talk about? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, I'm directing a show uh, at Sentai called Eminence in Shadow. And uh, it's a really, really cool show. Um, it's a, in the isekai uh, genre. We've been doing a lot of isekai uh, shows, which is good for me because I've been doing a lot of uh, teen angsty rom-coms, <laughs> rom-coms. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, if I have to hear another kid gripe about just say you love her already, you know? <laughs> um, so they've been a lot of fun. But this show, Eminence and Shadow, has really been cool. And I think it's like the, if you go to High Dive, which is a uh, Sentai streaming platform, I think it's the number one streaming show on High Dive right now. So uh, Congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm very, it's just a lot of fun. It's got a great cast. Um, Adam Gibbs, my daughter, Olivia Swayze's in it, uh, Christina Kelly, um, just a whole bunch of folks. And it, it's just, it's an amazing show. So check it out. Wonderful. And anything you'd like to say to your fans before we wrap? Uh, You know what? Just thank you so much for all of your support, um, all of your love and and everything. Uh, I'm I'm reminded of uh, years ago, uh, I I had to go to the hospital. It was actually 2019, the year before the pandemic. And I had to go in the hospital and I had an infection in my derriere. And uh, I went in thinking they're going to give me some penicillin or something like that. 
I ended up staying in the hospital for three weeks and almost died. I mean, it was, it was bad. And, uh, I couldn't work for three weeks. And a friend of mine, Kyle Jones set up a GoFundMe account and, um, the outpour of love from the anime community specifically was, I can't even begin to say thank you enough. Um, I love this world. I love this community. It is my life now. And um, I couldn't be happier. So just thank you all to the fans for making it happen. Well, thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you all for watching. And as always, have fun and follow your fandom. This is Mick Wingert, and you're watching Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to have fun and follow your fandom.